Can you tell me a little bit about your organization and your work here in Canada? The Canadian Spondylitis Association was formed in 2006 in order to um, form a patient advocacy, support and education group across the country. Prior to its formation, there had only been active patient associations in Ontario, British Columbia and Manitoba. So we wanted to cover all the other provinces and regions of the country. Um, it's a totally volunteer group. We're federally incorporated as a not-for-profit corporation. Um, but as I say, it's a volunteer group. Uh, we do get some funding and uh, we're just trying to grow our membership. It's very important to my mind that anybody who has spondyloarthritis becomes part of the community to advocate for that community and also to provide the researchers with some uh, bodies to look at for questionnaires and even blood samples, etc. We are, in fact, the patient side of SPARC, the Spondylarthritis Research Consortium of Canada. How, um, how do people get involved with your organization? Um, there's several ways. They can contact us through social media, Facebook or um, by Twitter. We do have a website, www.spondylitis.ca. We're also in the process of reaching out to all rheumatologists and select family physicians across the country to ensure that people who are diagnosed or recently, most recently diagnosed with spondyl arthritis are referred to us. I've heard quite a few people talk about the need for a national framework for arthritis, spondylitis included. What, um, what are your feelings about the national framework and the, the push for a framework across Canada? I think it's essential. Um, arthritis is uh, not terribly well understood by the general population and by uh, our various levels of government. I think it's very important because of the time to diagnosis, um, the effect on society of people with arthritis, that there is a very clear framework in place.